Hi guys, my name is Liam and welcome to MANA, the channel where we explore the religious significance of Christian dishes throughout history. And today we are making the ultimate Mother's Day bake, Simnel cake. That rhymes. So many of you won't have heard of Simnel Cake before, but Simnel Cake is a cake that dates back centuries and has adapted over time to suit the bacon trends of that specific time period. So Simnel Cake is a type of fruit cake and it's full with a ton of marzipan. And Simnel Cake was often consumed on Mothering Sunday, which occurs this Sunday. And Mothering Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Lent and it signified the break from the 40 day fast throughout Lent. So this cake was baked as a treat for all of those people that were breaking from all the things that they had given up. The reason it's called Mother and Sunday is because it called for people to return to their hometowns and attend mass at their mother church, their parish church, or their cathedral. However, in the last century, it's become associated with an appreciation of our mothers, and we know it today as Mother's Day. So Simnel Cake started out its journey as yeast leavened bread. And then in the 17th and 18th centuries, that bread dough was replaced with a pudding batter, which was filled with dried fruits, nuts, and spices. And then once it was cooked, it was encased within pastry and it was egg washed and then baked until golden. But it wasn't until the 19th century when we began to see the Simnel cake that we see today, when it actually started to look like a cake and marzipan was added. So what actually makes Simnel cake Christian? Well, with many Christian dishes, it all falls down to tradition and aesthetics. Simnel cake is Christian because it is rooted in Christian tradition. We consume Simnel cake as a break from our fast on Mothering Sunday. But as Christianity is a faith of the senses, all the decorations that are on Simnel cake have some significance to the Christianity of the dish too. So Simnel cake is baked with a layer of marzipan in the center of it. Then once it's come out of the oven and it's cooled, another layer of marzipan is added on top. But the real magic happens when they add the marzipan balls. So we add 11 marzipan balls to the top of Simnel cake and those 11 balls represent Jesus' disciples minus Judas the traitor. Now obviously the addition of these balls distinguish Simnel cake as a Christian cake and different to any other fruit cake. So historical records show that Simnel cake has been baked and consumed in England since the 11th century, which is mental because that is ages. However, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find bakeries that still offer the goods, uh, which is a shame because Simnel cake has been such a brilliant part of our Christian culinary tradition in England for so long. However, we are shaking things up today and we are going to reintroduce Simnel cake into our kitchen and start our very own Simnel cake renaissance. So, history lesson over, let's get down to the bacon. So, let's take a look at what we are going to need. So, we're going to need 175 grams of butter at room temperature, plus a little extra for greasing the tin, 175 grams of light muscovado sugar, three large eggs, 175 grams of self-raising flour, 300 grams of a dried fruit mix, 90 grams of glazed cherries that have been halved, the zest of one large lemon, two teaspoons of orange essence, and one teaspoon of ground mixed spice. So what we're going to need for our cake decorations is 500 grams of golden marzipan, some icing sugar to dust our surface for when we're rolling out our marzipan, two tablespoons of apricot jam, and the white of one egg that we're going to whisk later and use as our glaze on top of our marzipan. So now let's take a look at what equipment we're going to need. So firstly, we are going to need a mixing bowl, an eight inch cake tin, our saucepan, our spoon or spatula, our trusty egg wash brush, a grater or something to grate our lemon zest with, some parchment paper, a rolling pin and lastly sorry I forgot but we are going to need a cooling rack 
So now that we've got all of our equipment, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tear off a third of our marzipan and then we're going to sprinkle our work surface with some icing sugar and just give that a roll out. So this has to be big enough to go into the centre of our cake. So if you need to add little bits on just to make it bigger like I have, feel free to do so. After that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom out of our cake tin, pop that on our marzipan, and then just cut around that so we have a circle that will go in the center of the cake. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to prepare our cake tin. So we're going to throw some butter into a saucepan and let that melt. And as it's melting, we're going to cut out our parchment paper. So pop the bottom of your cake tin on some parchment paper again. Draw around it and cut that circle out. Behind the scenes, I've also measured how much parchment paper we're going to need for the sides of the tin. And I've measured that and then cut that out as well, as you'll see in a minute. So whilst you were doing that, your butter should have now melted. So take that off the heat, pour into a little container. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to brush that butter all over our cake tin. And you'll see that the cold cake tin actually starts to solidify the butter a bit. Uh, I find this is the easiest way just so the butter gets all around the tin. Once you've done that, we're going to pop our bacon paper on that that we've just cut out. So we're going to pop that little circle on the bottom and then we're going to take our side bits that I mentioned before and then we're going to just pop them round the sides and just make sure that it sticks to the butter. Now that we're all set, it's time to get bacon. So you're going to put your butter and your sugar into a bowl and give that a good mix. I used a whisk because it was easier uh, but I eventually got my hands in there because I wanted to get it all combined. Now that you've done that, you're going to add your eggs in and give that another whisk just until that's all combined. And then we're going to add our flour in just bit by bit, just until that batter thickens up. And then just get your spoon in there and just make sure you scrape down all the sides just so it's all in there together. Now that that's done, we're going to add in our orange essence along with our teaspoon of mixed spice our zest of a lemon and then we are going to add in our mixed dried fruit and our cherries that we cut in half. Mix that all together and then our cake batter is ready and we're ready to start filling our cake tin. So what you want to do is you want to take half of your cake batter and then pop that in your cake tin, spread that all around and then just smoothen the top of that. Once you've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to take our marzipan circle that we cut out earlier on and we're just going to place that on top of that cake mix. And then we're going to take the remainder of the batter, pop that on top of the marzipan and then spread all of that out evenly. Once that's done, we're all set and then the cake can go in the oven at 130 degrees Celsius for two and a half hours. Uh, check on the cake every 30 to 45 minutes. If it's starting to brown on top too quickly, what you're going to do is you're just going to put some tin foil over that and just keep it in the oven and watch it every now and then and it should bake to perfection. So once your cake's out, what we're going to do is we're going to pop that on our cooling rack and just pop our cake to the side. So whilst that's cooling over the next 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to take half of the remaining marzipan, sprinkle our surface with some ice and sugar, and then roll that out. So this is going to be the top layer of our cake. So pop that marzipan to the side and then we're going to get to work on our marzipan balls which represent the disciples minus Judas. So we're going to create 11 of these. And what I like to do is I like to pop some ice and sugar just on the surface, roll my ball out and then I like to roll that through the ice and sugar just so it doesn't get sticky. So by the time we've done that, our cake will have now cooled. So I'm going to grab my layer of marzipan sheet that we've rolled out. I'm going to remove the cake out of the tin. And with the outer of the tin, I'm just going to stamp it down onto the marzipan to create a circle shape. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take our apricot jelly, pop it in a saucepan on a low heat, and just wait until that kind of loosens up into a thick kind of honey-like liquid. So this is going to act as our glue to glue our marzipan down onto our cake and to glue the balls on top of that marzipan layer. Now what you're going to do is you're going to grab your trusty egg wash brush, get a big scoop of that apricot jam and pop it on top of the cake and just spread that out. 
Once you've done that, we're going to pop our layer of marzipan on top of that, and that apricot jam is going to act as a glue for that. What I've done here is I have crimped the edges of my marzipan. That is purely for decorative purposes, and you do not have to do that, but I thought it looked cute. I also cut some lines into the top of my marzipan, just run my knife across it. Again, just for decorative purposes, but you don't have to do this. Now we're going to pop our little apostles on top of here. Now you might want to map out where the balls are going to go first, because I didn't do that, um, and I clearly ran out of space as to where they were going and had to do like a little reshuffle. I also made a little cross just out of the remain and Mars pan that I had to go on top. You don't have to do this, but I did it because uh, I love Jesus. So once you've got all your decorations on, what we're going to do is we're going to whisk the white of an egg. And with our egg wash brush, we're just going to go over the tops of our balls. And then we're going to just um, go over the center of our cake and pop it under the grill just until it browns. And there we have it, guys, our lovely Simnel cake. Uh, I might gift mine to my mum on this Sunday, but I can't promise because I'm dying to taste it. Uh, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're from St. Benedict's Catholic High School, uh, don't forget to tag us in any of the bakes that you make and anyone else, feel free to follow it. It's stbenedicts.chaplaincy. Until next week, God bless. Bye.